This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen from Virginia Auto Services out. So today I brought in John Riggle from Tri-City Transmission, and he's going to help me help you with your car. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we are helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. So if you got car questions, we've got car answers, so give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also reach us by text at 411923. Maybe you just got a simple question you want to fire it off through text. You can do it that way. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of fact or fiction, uh, open phones and text, of course, and the engine cooling system. John, this is the time of year where all those little coolant leaks that people ignored are going to start to show oh, up yeah. as uh, blown head gaskets. Yeah, it's that time of year. And uh, the cooling system, nothing wrecks a car faster than an engine overheating. Yep, absolutely. And, and, and so when you go to the auto shop and they say you got a bit of a coolant leak, that's not the time to ignore. That's the time to find out what is leaking, how much is it leaking. You know, we like to rate leaks on a scale of one to five, yeah. you yeah. know, like a hurricane, five being the worst. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so, you know, what is it? You know, sometimes you'll see a little bit of stalactite around a water pump or something like that. It's not yeah. really leaking. Maybe it's just a little bit. But right. And we got to keep our eye on that, yep. but we don't necessarily have to address it right now. But the thing of it is, is, is when these things just when it's 80 degrees out, yeah, the car's not being taxed. Right. But when it's 110 degrees out, and we were 105 yesterday, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Mm, you got in your car and you realized, hey, the air conditioning didn't even cool down until till you got to your driveway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of the way that goes. John, what would you say the the most uh, overlooked thing about the cooling system is? Yeah, coolant level, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just true. That's the one I see more often than not. I, you know, I check almost every car that comes in. If I get an opportunity, I check them. I watch them because uh, we have issues with uh, coolers going bad and glycol getting in the transmissions. Right. So I always watch the level real close, and it's every other car that comes in is actually low on coolant. And you know, a, a pint low in a in a couple of gallon cooling system, that's a lot. Yeah, and the thing about that is, and, and we've brought this up before on the show, is when your when your coolant level is not at the top of the radiator, yep, that means there's a level of steam in the top of that radiator. That's right. And that steam is taken. These radiators, you know, in the old days they used to be made of uh, copper or brass or something like that. Right. Now they're made of plastic. plastic. Yeah. And so that steam, will, what that'll do is actually crystallize that plastic. Yeah, they turn into stuff that feels like potato chips. Oh yeah. yeah and you so t- touch the top of the radiator, and they'll just crack apart. And so when you get to 105 degrees, that's not good. So being a little bit low on coolant is a big deal. That's a big deal. And you're yeah. saying, you say every other car? Every other car. Every yeah, other car is low on coolant. common. So if you've been in our shop any time the last year, there's chances that you were low on coolant. Yeah. And, and I think that's typical for, for everybody out there is that, you know, this low coolant thing. What about servicing the cooling system? Because people are wondering, well, hey, what kind of maintenance do I need to the cooling system? What should they be doing? I know that... There's a lot of flushing that goes on. People want to sell everybody a flush. Yeah. What, what is... should they be doing? Probably less than what they have been. Okay. In my book. Okay. Uh, with a with a cooling system service, flushing is probably not generally a really good idea. The only reason you would do a flush would, it would be if there was some contamination in the system or there was some some really good reason to do a flush. Changing the coolant on a periodic basis isn't necessarily bad, but that's a drain and refill. That's a different Different procedure. That's simply taking the old coolant out, putting new coolant in. Don't go off and, and have the thing pressure flushed or anything like that. Um, that can deteriorate some of the uh, protection that's built up in the layers of chemicals on the uh, in the inside of the cooling system. And if we wash those chemicals out of there, now we have to start all over and we open ourselves up for all kinds of corrosion issues and things that really shouldn't be there. Okay. Late model coolants last a lot longer than they used to. So, yes, they're better than they used to. So now, when someone's driving down the road, you guys got to be aware of where your engine temperature is. Where should the gauge be riding on the engine temperature? Most cars right in the middle. Right in the middle. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But you have to remember, too, a lot of gauges now are phony gauges. It's like an idiot light. Um, they are designed to stay in the middle because people freak out if they treat 
creep up to three quarters of the oh, way yeah, or something yeah. like that. So a lot of the gauges are actually programmed that they'll stay right in the middle until the thing actually overheats, and then they just push the gauge all the oh, way over. Oh, yeah. They know we can't handle the truth. That's, so the gauges are lying to us. Uh, They're making us feel happy. Yes, yeah, yeah <laughs> unfortunately. But they should be right in the middle. But if you're a car manufacturer, you know, you don't want every time that every time the thing goes up a blip, you yep. don't want everyone calling you up and saying, hey, there's something wrong with this car you just sold me. It could be completely normal. So, older, older Fords used to be famous for it. The instrument voltage regulators would kind of, they, they would kind of vary a bit. So Fords would creep up. They'd be three quarters of the way, but the gauge only said normal on it. <laughs> so you had to, you, had, you had, you just got this big range of normal. And that used to freak people out if they get up to three quarters of the way. And it could be perfectly normal just because those gauges weren't very accurate. Well, if you see it creeping up and it's maybe it's getting up there three quarters of the way and you're thinking, hey, maybe there's an issue. Hey, maybe not a bad time to check it out. One of the common repairs I think of is cooling fan repairs. Yeah. So there's cooling fans that, that pull air across your radiator. And this will be a situation where people say, you know, it seems to get warmer at stoplights. Mm -hmm. But when I get going down the road 40, 50 miles an hour, there's no problem. It's just when I sit at a stoplight for a long time, that's when I start to see an issue. Well, I start When someone describes that, I start to think of cooling fans Yeah. Uh, being the issue. And a cooling fan, I mean, you can look under the hood and it could be blowing, but it may not be blowing up to right. capacity. Right, right. So well, and another tip off to that issue is sometimes uh, at the same time you see that temperature gauge going up, you'll notice that the air conditioner doesn't blow quite as cold as it should. And a lot of times when you've got this air conditioner that's blowing 60 or 70 degrees when it should be blowing in, down in the 40s at an idle like that, that makes me wonder if there isn't an issue with the cooling fan to start with. Okay, so we've got we've got airflow issues when it comes to cooling systems. You and I were talking about that cars that have been in accidents. Oh yeah, and uh, when they put them all back together, and you know, the guy at the body shop, he's more of a body guy, and he may not necessarily know that piece of what did you call that piece of foam? On oh, the, the five degree foam on the Toyotas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those little pieces of foam that that help the airflow, you know, through the radiator, yeah. or through the condenser. Uh, those little panels, there's little pl all kinds of little plastic pieces underneath your car. Mm -hmm. They keep the airflow and direct it across the radiator. So if that piece doesn't get put back on, you know, it's just it's just a little here, a little there, a little this not right, a little that not right. Adds up to a car that doesn't cool as well as it should. Yeah. yeah. So we got the airflow issues. We've got the coolant issues. There is also in vehicles there's thermostats, mm -hmm. and what thermostats do is. They don't allow the coolant to really flow through the system until the engine has come up to operating temperature. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we see it in the wintertime where we get a diagnostic trouble code that says engine cool for too long. Yeah. But we know the thermostat is stuck wide open. So mm -hmm. it's always got the flow of coolant, uh, and it can get stuck the other way as well. Yeah. So we've got, we've got issues from airflow can cause problems. We've got issues from thermostats can cause issue. Uh, we've got issues from leak. You know, a low coolant, you know, in your system, mm -hmm. it's not flowing everything through the system because it's half there. That's that's a problem. And the other thing, too, to, uh, I think of, John, is radiators plugging up. Do radiators plug up with sediment over the years? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. We just uh, did that BMW. It was just, or Range Rover. It just oh, plugged yeah. up all in the bottom, caused the trans to overheat. Yeah, I know. That's a weird one. So so yeah. the transmission's overheating. Yeah. and. And it's only overheating because the transmission cooler is at the bottom end of the radiator. Yep. Well, there's a whole layer of sediment, you know, that covers up the transmission cooler. So the coolant in the radiator never actually touches the transmission cooler. Yeah. So that that can cause an issue too. And you would never you would never think that to be the case. Yeah. yeah. But there literally was a test for that. We we opened up the uh, pitcock. Yeah. On, on the radiator, and we wanted to see how long it took to time uh, it and see how see how much comes out in a certain period of time. Yeah. There was actually a, a published test for doing that. Is there a rule of thumb for how people should be servicing their coolant on their car? Yeah, there's about 50 of them. Everybody's got a different opinion on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say yeah. uh, 10 different mechanics, you're going to get nine different answers, and uh, five of them is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and so, so my stance on that, personally, follow what the manufacturer recommends. You know, mm -hmm. if you're uncomfortable with it, oh, okay, you know, cut it in half. <laughs> right. If the manufacturer says it'll cool and last a hundred thousand miles, and you and you want to be proactive, yeah, okay, T do it at fifty, but don't get carried away. Don't do it more often than you need to. That can cause other issues, you know. Right. Now we know when Dexcool first came around, that oh, yeah. was the first. You know, coolant was traditionally green. Everyone knows they see green puddle. My engine's leaking coolant. Well, it ain't ain't green anymore. Oh, so yeah. It's hardly ever green, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's blue, it's pink, it's red, it's all these other colors. It, there's even some fuchsia coolant out yeah. there, I think. 
but but uh, you know, so we don't even know what the color of it is. I don't even know what color fuchsia is, but okay, <laughs> I don't I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I've heard the word. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, you know, so so yeah, we GM was the first to go from green coolant, which everyone typically knew was fifteen or thirty thousand mile coolant, and they said, hey, we got this Dex coolant, it goes a hundred thousand miles. Yeah. Those early cars really had a lot of problems when they changed, when they made that change. It yeah. took them a while to catch up the yeah, rest of the Yeah, there were some issues with that. We used to call it deck sludge. Yeah. And it would just turn into crystallize in the cooling system and cause some real, real problems. But the recommendation on that was 100,000 miles mm-hmm. to service yeah. it. And I see on a, you know, on the Mopart bottle of coolant, it says, a, it says 150,000 miles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's really very much like Dex cool. It's a very similar design to it. But, uh, you know, so you're saying... You might cut it in half. If yeah. it's a hundred thousand mile coolant, do it at fifty. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you can be oversold. I think there's some overzealousy in this coolant flushing department. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, so really, modern coolant, most of them are extended life. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is there a vehicle that doesn't have an extended life coolant to it? I don't think anymore. Well, uh, I don't think anymore. Not, yeah. Nothing that I can think of that comes off the top of my head. So really, the car is going to have. Probably at least 50,000 miles before you have to do anything with the coolant. At least. At yeah. least 50,000 miles. So if you got a car with 30,000 miles and someone's telling you to flush your coolant, yeah. and they, may, they may be a little overzealous or heavy-handed yeah. on, on their, some of their maintenance recommendations. Yeah. And, and if, you, if you get to 50,000 miles and you look in that coolant recovery bottle and that coolant isn't a nice, clean color uh, you know, that you can really define, if it looks brown... There's no brown coolants. Yeah. Okay. No, no one they've, does the brown. They've done, they've done a good job of not getting us brown. <laughs> uh, so if, if it's starting to turn brown, then you need to have it checked out because there's something going on there. Yeah, for sure. Anyhow, when we come back, we've got Sheila and Mark and other open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate Batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. that carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. Ah, that, that song makes me feel good. I like music that makes me feel good. Me that, none of that music doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> Anyhow, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen from Virginia Auto Services off. So we've got John Riggle. He's a lead diagnostician at Tri-City Transmission and my right-hand man. He is here to help me with your car. John has 40 years' experience as an automotive technician. So if you think you got a car question that you don't think we can answer, you know what? Well, we're going to answer it, even if we got to make something up. But we, we will get you an answer <laughs> for sure. So to get a hold of us, 
602-277-KTAR. And i got to clarify because we're talking about coolant and people are thinking, well, we, I don't know what the heck coolant is. Coolant, antifreeze, same thing. So if you're from somewhere cold, you guys call it antifreeze. If you're from Arizona, we call it coolant. Yeah. But it's kind of the same stuff. So, so, you know, sometimes we forget that when we're in auto shops because there's kind of an auto shop vernacular that we have. We say, oh, we got to go diag that car. Well, what the heck is diag yeah. to, to the regular, normal, everyday customer? Well, that's diagnostic. You know, so, but anyway, antifreeze, coolant, same thing. Uh, and we'll talk more about that as the show goes on. If you've got a cooling system question or any question in regard to your car, don't hesitate to give us a call. We're going to go with Sheila in Phoenix. She's got a uh, 2005 Mitsubishi Endeavor. How can we help you, Sheila? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, thank you. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, I, I uh, just had a question. Um, lately, when I start my car, I hear like a grinding sound, and then when I accelerate, it, it's grinding, um, you know, and then it seems to stop. So what do you think I need to do or Noises are tough, but I mean, if being that I can't see the car, when you start the car, you said it grinds. Is it grind sitting in park in your driveway? No, it's just it makes like um, a, a noise, like a metal, you know, metal grinding noise. And then when I'm accelerating, I can hear it. I can hear it even more. Okay, how long does that go on for? Until I reach probably about I don't know, thirty-five, forty miles an hour. Okay, and then if you had to come up to a stoplight again, would you hear that again? Right, when, when you go off. But but I, but I after I'm driven for a little while, I don't hear it. Sure, sure. Noises are one of those things that are that are super tough, you know. Uh, in, in our mind, John, we jump in cars and we listen for noises, and, yeah. and almost right off the bat, we're like, oh, I've heard that before. That's going to be an exhaust shield, right. you know, that's rubbing against something, right, right, or that's, yeah. that's a wheel bearing, or that's a... You know, when you start the engine, well, then maybe that's an idler pulley that's going bad. So, Sheila, that's going to be a whole – could be a whole wealth of things. And just, just from our conversation, I, I would have to jump in the car with you, and you would just have to point yeah. – you can't actually point at a noise, but you the have to – The only thing I could say about that is, in general, cars don't make grinding noises if they're operating right. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's, some, there's something, is, something going on there. Is it important? Uh, you know, that's hard to say. I, yeah, noises are tough. For sure. Hey, Sheila, if you need a good shop, uh, you know, we talk on the show, you know, we're here to answer questions and help you with the car and put you in the know. But we're also tied to a network of shops at bumper to bumper com. That's bumper to bumper radio.com. So if you're looking for a good shop, give them a call, <clears throat> run it by, see what they think, and hopefully get some more help there. But uh, noise is one of those things that are tough to cover over the air. So. Yeah. Anyhow, we're going to go with Mark and Gilbert. He's got a 2006 Toyota Tacoma. How can we help you, Mark? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Okay. I have a uh, – my Tacoma has 225,000 miles on it. She runs great. It was in the dealer for a recall notice. And during that time, they did – you know, of course, they tried to sell me on other services. Sure. I knew that this truck – has a has a sealed transmission with supposed lifetime fluid. Now they said that it would be a good idea to flush the trans, and they have special tools to do that. I'm I'm from the old school where if it runs right, you don't mess with the trans if you haven't done it all the time and flushed it from day one, you don't mess with it. But at 225,000 miles, I got to think that the lifetime fluid might be out of life. Yeah, it's, uh, that's uh, the most common question that we could probably even have on yeah. the show or even uh, on our telephone at the shop. What do we yeah. What do we do? You know, we're a Tri City Transmission, and we have this conversation probably thirty times a week. But it is one of those things. Well, first of all, there's no such thing as a sealed transmission. Uh, the, you know, they're sealed to an auto shop who doesn't want to mess with transmissions. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're sealed. But the manufacturers have taken the dipstick away. So that's given everybody the impression that they are sealed. But they're I, still sealed. Haven't, I haven't seen a sealed they're one. They're sealed until, until they're out of the manufacturer's warranty. <laughs> exactly. So they, they don't want the common consumer checking their transmission fluid because, yeah. you know, some of these warranties go for 100,000 miles. The last thing they want to do is have some consumer yeah. pour in some sort of transmission additive or snake oil or something like that into the transmission. So they want you out of it, plus it saves them a dipstick tube and a dipstick. Yeah. You know, that's huge cost savings when you make a lot of trucks. Yeah, yeah. So as far as, you know, for us what we do is, my belief is if the transmission is, is not having an issue, 
and you service it, that's going to be perfectly fine. But if you have a transmission that does have a problem and you service it, you might kick it over the edge. And that's going to be one of those things where at some point, is it lifetime fluid? Is that the lifetime of the fluid, the lifetime of the transmission? What li- Whose lifetime is that? Well, the, the other thing that I look at and I consider, too, is what is the lifetime of that transmission? What was the design life? The design life was probably 160,000 miles. That's Mm -hmm. real typical for manufacturers for most most things that they produce in in automotive. The design life is 160,000 miles. You're 225,000 miles. You've done pretty good with that transmission at that point. So, um, so you know, yeah. Do you want to try to extend the life of that transmission some more by changing the fluid? That's fine, but you also have to remember you may actually be nearing the life of that transmission. So that's where people get confused. Oh, I, I cha- had the transmission fluid changed, and then the transmission quit on me right after that. Well, is that chicken or the egg? Was right. the transmission already, already going out? Life, yeah. or, or did you ex- exacerbate it by changing the fluid? Probably not. Yeah, and I would say rather than flush it, you know, maybe just do a pan off service. So you're going to remove yes, the absolutely. pan. You're going you're to see just, what's in it. Yeah, see how yeah. it looks, you know, just do a service. But when I say a pan-off service, that's not a flush. So we're only going to yeah. replace, you know, four or five quarts out of the system. So we're not going to mm-hmm. change out the whole system. So if we want to talk about not messing up the chemistry of what's already going on, yeah, yeah. Th- that's maybe a more simplistic way to do that. And maybe do that once this year and then do it again next year, and then you should be, you know, back to good. Yeah. So that's a great question. I mean, it is just a big-time FAQ uh, that we get, it seems like, every every week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, and, and uh, <clears throat> it's the thing about transmission fluid is at some point it wears out. It, mm-hmm. it no longer is good. Yeah. So a transmission it will run on water because it's hydraulic. I mean, that's right. a little bit of a hyperbole. But it will run on water because it's hydraulic. It's, but sometimes it, it, the, the lubricity is all gone. Mm-hmm. So at some point, do I change? I think your your odds are better to change the fluid than to continue to run it with it fluid that's not even fluid anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if it's, uh, you know, like playing blackjack, when do we hit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we hit on 16 or don't we hit on 16? So I think you're better off doing it. But the thing also is that, you know, a bad transmission service, in my mind, is worse than no service at all. That, well, that's the that's other the key. Yep. You know, so I don't necessarily give it to the, the, the 16-year-old of the car wash because I was one of those a long time ago. And yeah. I think I wrecked a couple cars. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, when we come back, we got more open lines at 602-277-5827. We're going to get John, John, and Melissa. We'll be right back. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyons Southern. Bees International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years, and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20 plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. KTAR FM, Glendale, Phoenix. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Arizona's news station. News station. 
KTAR on air, 92.3 FM, online at KTAR.com and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic now. It's 11.30. I'm Tom Perumian. Here's our top story. President Donald Trump's order to ease limits on political activity by religious organizations is being met with both enthusiasm and dread from religious leaders. Some rejoice in the new freedom to preach their views. Others fear the change will erode the integrity of houses of worship. Hamas is confirming that its former Gaza Prime Minister Ismail Hanaye has been chosen as the Islamic militant group's political chief. Hamas spokesman Fawazi Barhum says the group hopes Hanye's election would see opening to the region. And despite being an international movie star, martial arts master, and close friend of former Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Steven Seagal is persona non grata in the Ukraine. Seagal made the blacklist recently, being identified as a national security risk by the Ukraine due to his warm relationship with Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Now for a check on traffic, we go to Mike Daniels in the rmegold.com traffic center. Thanks, Tom. I mean, Gilbert, the eastbound uh, Williams Field Road it remains blocked due to an accident right there at Palomino Creek Drive. Your best bet, just avoid that area altogether. In Mesa, we got a crash at 8th Avenue west of Gilbert, and we do have that wreck moved off to the side, Loop 101 westbound west of the I-17. Checking ADOT cams, a tow truck is on scene, so hopefully they have that cleared shortly. This report brought to you by Sleep Number. Discover the Sleep Number bed with Sleep IQ technology. It adjusts on each side so both of you can know your best sleep only at a Sleep Number store. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. Breezy and clear today with a high of 95 degrees, partly cloudy and cool overnight. 61 the low, partly cloudy and 71 on Sunday. It's 94 degrees in Chandler. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Tom Perumian on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Whether you're a lifelong dirt road driving, tackle box toting, weekend warrior, or an outdoor lifestyle rookie, from the desert to the mountains of our great state, Mike Russell has the outdoors in Arizona covered. This afternoon at 1 with Get Outdoors, only on KTAR News 92.3 FM and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Hi, I'm Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission. Well, you may have come to know us for being a transmission expert. What you may not know is that our customers regularly ask us why we don't perform repairs to the rest of the vehicle. You guys are so great. Why work on just the transmission? Well, the request became hard to ignore, and three years ago, we began to build an infrastructure to perform general automotive repair. We weren't going to do general repair if we couldn't be great at it. So in 2013, we began the soft opening of Tri-City Auto Repair on Smith Road. We brought on ASC Master Technicians to work side-by-side with our Master Transmission Technicians. The combination of the best in both of these trades has created a synergy that allows us not only to fix your transmission, but to service and repair your whole car and to do it well. Let's face it, the modern car has become so integrated. We believe all of our expert knowledge puts us ahead of the curve. Find us at TriCityTransmission.com or TempeAutoRepairShop.com. That's TempeAutoRepairShop.com. Don't waste all your precious time, gas, and money trying to cram a three-day road trip into your Memorial Day weekend this year. Hi, this is Jerry Colangelo inviting you to join us as we celebrate the 6th Annual Bunker to Bunker Memorial Day Stay and Play Tournament, benefiting Phoenix Children's Hospital at the historic Wigwam Resort. Swain Palm Trees, Poolside Margaritas, and Lush Championship Golf are just part of this incredible weekend. Grab your partner and sign up for our two-person scramble on the world-renowned Gold Course on Saturday, May 27th. This event is loaded with special prizes, awards, and lunch, and it even includes a free coupon for a second round of golf all for just $85 better yet bring your friends and family out and make it a memorable holiday weekend with room night specials starting at just $115 per night now that's a holiday value you won't find anywhere else space is limited so register today for details and registration go to bunkergolf.com that's bunkergolf.com Fix it or forget it. This is the show that will help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. 
Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen with Virginia Auto Service is out. So I've got John Riggle, the lead diagnostician at Tri-City Transmission, in here to help me with your car. Help me help you with your car. Hopefully that's what we got going on here. We've got Joyce, we've got Jennifer, we've got Melissa, then we've got John, and we've got John. Uh, and uh, we're going to get right to John. we got to get to these phones. We're going to go with John in Litchfield Park. He's got a 2002 uh, GMC Sierra. How can we help you, John? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, I've noticed the past uh, six months or so when I park the vehicle in the driveway and come out the next morning, I have rust indicated on the, on the ground. Uh, underneath the vehicle, uh, I have uh, no, there's no loss of fluid at all in the uh, in the system, so the fluids. Are what, do you, what do you have in the driveway? Rust. 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 Uh, rust indicated. No. Oh, okay. On on the ground, and I again, I'm not losing any fluid anywhere, so I know it's not coming from the radiator system. Um, How are you verifying it's not coming from the radiator system? Are you looking at the cool, well, coolant reservoir bottle, or are you looking at underneath the yes, radiator cap? Yes, coolant reservoir bottle. Okay. Yeah, you got to be careful with that. You got to pull the radiator cap off at one time and look too. Right, I know. Yeah, uh, yeah just just to make sure because sometimes you can have coolant in the in the overflow bottle. Um, where right. where in relation to the vehicle are these stains at? Are they, are they underneath the engine in the engine compartment, yes. or are they back midway no. down the car? No, they're under, underneath the engine, okay. uh, underneath the the front part of the engine. So it would be either the uh, either the radiator, some sort, or perhaps the air conditioning system when I run the air conditioner, of course, and it cools off when we get the fluid that comes out after that. When you say rust, are you talking about you've got a puddle or you've got... No, no I'm talking about a, the, the rust color. Okay? Rust color. Okay. And, and you can see that it's flowing. Uh, you know, it dries up pretty quickly in the temperatures we have right now. But usually it's overnight when I do it or sometimes park it during the day here and come back to it. So something's happening. I mean, I can clean the rust off the driveway, but that's not going to solve the problem. I need to know what's going on with the vehicle. Yeah, you bet. You know, and on those on those GMs from that year, that's going to be that Dex Cool coolant that yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. It is kind of a kind of a rusty color. Yep. So I think that is possibly what's going on. Yeah. But what's going to happen? You know, sometimes John, we see these leaks that are cold leaks. Yeah. Where the car doesn't leak when it's hot, but cold overnight, it'll mm-hmm. leak some coolant. And in, in, uh, you know, it may it may be enough to leave a mark on the ground, but that maybe that's two teaspoons. Yeah. You know, yeah. so the coolant looks like it's full, mm-hmm. but we're starting to have a leak going on. Yeah. So it does need to be pressure tested. And sometimes on these on these cold leaks, we literally pull them in the bay, put pressure on them, and, and leave for the night, it, yeah. and then come in the morning and see what yeah. you know. Yeah. A lot of a lot of times, uh, leaks from the water pumps and stuff on those leave uh, tracks right down the front of the uh, front of the oil pan. You can usually pretty much guess where it's coming from when you see the tracks from where it's at. The uh, heater quick connect fittings on those back at the firewall also leak, and that's a difficult leak to see unless you know to look right at it because it runs mm-hmm. down the back of the block and around the bell housing on those things. For sure. Yeah, there's something going on there, John. We're going to go from John in Litchfield Park to John in Ahwatukee, and it looks like John's got a 2001, or sorry, 2011 Honda Civic EX. How can we help you, John? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes. Uh, 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 an AC question, and I had uh, was driving around the other day and, and uh, came to a quick brake stop. Probably has nothing to do why the AC just failed to stop blowing cool air. So, having had a, a past experience with Honda Air go out, I uh, became the I went on Google, which probably everybody does today, just to kind of get a quick <laughs> idea of what might be going on. And I tried some of the quick things like the the relay fuses or whatever they call them, and and, and uh, noticed that the clutch wasn't engaging. So talking to my Honda guy, he told me there's a few things that would cause that. So at that point, I took it into my local uh, brake shop up on 48th and Chandler, and I was kind of reluctant because of an experience I had before, but either way, I took it up there. Yesterday, they, within 30 minutes, they called me back and said, I need a new AC kit, and today, they're calling me back and telling me now I need a, a blower, a condenser fan, and I thought, wouldn't they have known the condenser fan would have been bad, even though it's the, the, the the compressor or the clutch was bad, wouldn't they have known that that was bad before they started the whole installation? How many miles are on your Civic? Uh, two, let's see, 125 approximately, 125,000. I've got the car from my uh, my brother owned it prior, so I'm the second owner. Yeah, and there's there's I mean there's a couple ways we can look at this, and yeah. you may have very well needed an AC kit. When they say about AC kit, they're kind of replacing some common components that go along with yeah. the compressor. Mm-hmm. But uh, what they may not have known is that hey, you know, they put the AC on there. 
They get it all charged up, and it's not blowing as cool as they want. So then they start looking hard at the condenser fan. Yeah. So maybe the condenser fan, like we were talking earlier, those Honda fans are too speed. Right. You know, maybe it was only getting low speed. Well, and, and the other thing happens. If you've got a compressor that's not engaging because a uh, field coil is bad or a clutch that's bad or something like that, uh, most of the condenser fans are actually pressure operated. So you, the technician flips it on. Uh, the compressor doesn't come on. He doesn't expect the cooling, the condenser fan to come on at that point either because it, it shouldn't. It doesn't until you build pressure. So there's something that gets overlooked. When I see a situation like that, I usually grab a scan tool and see if I can command the fan on. So okay. it, it kind of got overlooked, but I wouldn't doubt that it needs it. A condenser fan failure can cause high pressures that can lead to a compressor failure. Right. So, you know, in auto repair, and, and I could see where as a consumer you'd be like questioning what you just heard. But, you know, knowing that we're in the yeah. business and we've been through this once or twice, yeah. we, we, we've, we've been sitting there. Well, I, and, and, and so, yeah, it could, you know, it could have been overlooked or it could have just, you know, it's, hey, we replaced. You know, it's like you find the bad link in the chain and you replace that and then you find out there's another bad link in the chain. Like so, I said, fixing cars is easy. Figuring out how much it's going to cost and how long it takes before you know what's wrong with it is the almost impossible part. You know, for so. sure. Absolutely. Hey, one of the comments I want to make on AC systems, John, is that I'm just a big fan of OE OE stuff. There's all. There's a whole wealth of oh, crummy yeah. AC parts out there. I mean, it's like my wife's car was in an accident years ago, and uh, they had to replace the condenser, and they put in some cheap crap condenser that had about half the surface yeah. area of the factory one. It, it was a it was a Toyota Camry that would that would freeze you out of the car, and now I got a car that you know you know it's wimpy. Yeah, but you know anymore. <laughs> there's just a there's a lot of crummy parts out there. Period. I think Honda CRVs. Right. How many of those just blew up? Oh, the, yeah, grenaded. <laughs> grenaded, you know, right from the factory. And it's like, oh, boy. For sure. Okay. So anyway, but you can insist, you know, kind of ask what kind of parts you're getting. And, uh, you know, certainly <clears throat> sometimes you save money going with aftermarket parts, uh, you know, but sometimes usually, they can cost you more money. Usually in the long run with air yeah. conditioning parts, if they're not OE parts, it's really difficult. They just, there's not much room to cut corners on them. For sure. Well, let's go with Melissa in Gilbert. She's got a 2009 Ford Explorer. How can we help you, Melissa? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. Thanks for trying to help. Um, I hope I explain this to where you can understand because I don't myself. But um, I put a system in my son's car for him. He has 212s at amp and all that stuff. I'm not sure if this is in your area of expertise or not, but we've taken it to two or three different um, audio shops because when the car is off, like the accessories are on, it sounds perfect. But when it starts, it's totally distorted. And they're telling us that it's something to do with the car itself, like the alternator or something. I, I don't know what to do. Yeah, for sure. And I just yeah. I just got a stereo put in my car, so I got an answer for you, and I got a place where I'm going to send yeah. you. Uh, <clears throat> I've got uh, uh, Don at Soundworks. They're over on Scottsdale Road in Oak, roughly. You know, he put a stereo in my car. I couldn't have been happier with it. I'm really happy with the way it came out. But, you know, when I was talking to Don, when I first met him, and I saw that, that he had a, you know, he started to have scan tools. I'm like, why does a stereo guy have all these scan tools, you know? Yeah, yeah. He had nice scan tools, you know. He had like an Autologic, and he had a this, and he had a that. But if you're having an issue, call Don up. Go to Don at Soundworks, and he'll know what to do with that. I mean, it doesn't sound, you know, again, when <clears throat> there's a lot less happening when the, when the car's off. So the sound system is going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any, any, anything in the basic fundamental electrical issues, when you start to amplify electricity, uh, you pick up all the electrical noise in the car, so it can be. It can be alternators. There's uh, noise suppression things that need to be done with, with you know, higher power systems and stuff. There's isolation that needs to be done. You, you need to find somebody that has the skills and ability to do that. A lot of guys simply are good at bolting pieces in, but right. uh, <clears throat> it, it's not quite that simple when you get into the high end. So. Yeah, and, and changing parts is one thing, but fixing a problem when there is one, you know, exactly. that's where that's where somebody like Soundworks comes in. So sure. thanks for the call, Melissa. We're going to go with uh, Jennifer in Scottsdale. She's got a tooth. You know, actually, I'm going to trade that. we got Joyce in Glendale with a 2006 Nissan, how can we help you, Joyce? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, Joyce. Are you calling me? Yeah, that's you. Joyce? Yep, absolutely. Okay, hold on a second. I'm at the grocery store. <laughs> okay. Um, I have 2006 Nissan. Um, about 40, it's got almost 80,000 on it now. About 40,000 miles when I go to try to start it. It takes two times to get it to start. And then, now that I'm almost at 80,000, it almost takes me three times to get it to start. I've had it checked out. They don't know what it is. I have a friend who's over 40,000. Hers is starting in to do the same thing. You know if there's been any recall? Not, not, not in particular, but when you say it's, it's, it's 
takes a couple times to start. Is that a push button start in that? No. Okay, so you actually turn the key. And it, it, yes. Does the car just crank, or does it not crank at all when you when you have? No, problems? it cranks. Okay, it cranks, but it just takes a long time before it starts. Yeah, you you go to crank it. It just cranks. It doesn't start, or it sounds like it wants to start, but then it dies. It'll go put put sometimes, and then it dies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got an idea on that one. A, a, a lot of times, and in, in one of the hardest things for guys to diagnose is a buildup of carbon on the back of the valves. Uh, and it's an issue that shows up uh, usually within the first, during cranking or within the first 30 seconds after the car starts and runs. If it starts and runs and it runs rough for about 30 seconds or so, and it does it at various temperatures and various times, it's usually because there's a buildup of carbon on the back of the valves. Uh, there can be a lot of other things that cause it. Somebody has to diagnose it. Um, and you, you need to find the right guy that's that's capable of weeding through it. In a, it may take several overnight stays to get it to duplicate enough to where a guy can test it and be sure about what's going on, especially if this is something that only happens every once in a while or after the car sits for a while. But uh, carbon on the back of the valves would be real high on my list for that particular car. For sure. <clears throat> well, thanks for the call. We're going to be right back. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships and, oh, yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave, and one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate Batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Few cities are as car-centric as Phoenix, and this is the show that'll help you to better understand that machine you depend on to get around the valley. It's Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM and the KTAR app for Android and iPhone. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen from Virginia Auto Services out. So we've got John Riggle in from Tri-City Transmission. And we are hopefully helping you with your car. Today we talked a lot about cooling systems. So we've got Jennifer, we've got Chris, we've got Bobby. And uh, room for one or two more at 602-277-5827. And uh, I want to get with Jennifer in Scottsdale. She's got a 2001 Ford Focus wagon. Uh, hey, Jennifer, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? Yes, hi, thank you. Um, my my problem sounds similar to Joyce's. Um, it's basically hard starting, uh, but only when the engine's warmed up, like first thing in the morning it starts right up. The more trips I take, the more more gas I have to give it as, as I start it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's had a few engine lights come on, which they don't last long, but when I have them diagnosed, it's usually saying like cylinder two misfire. Okay, so you do have you you do have some things going on there, yeah. Uh, and I don't know what they're what they're recommending as far as cylinder n- number two misfire. And uh, people, those check engine lights come on for a reason. Yep. And so 
you know, you're having problems with the car starting, and we know it's got a cylinder two, you know, misfire. So there definitely is some work that needs to happen there, you know, to repair that thing. And uh, you know, John, I, I hear a lot of people say, "Well, I had it, you know, the, the check engine light come on, and I, you know, I went to, yeah. you know, the Acme Auto Parts on the corner. They told me, oh, it's just a mission thing. Don't worry about it, right, right, or something like that." You know, every every time we don't worry about those lights, we end up with more and more stacking of problems. That yeah, come up. yeah, and that 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 light, and it, it, if they're talking about a misfire uh, issue, uh, need to address the misfire issue. Mis, misfires left untreated over a period of time cause catalytic converter failures and cats, yeah. you know, two thousand dollars plus. Yeah, you do not want to. You do not want. And the other thing she said is, that I got to give it more gas to get it started. Yeah. And the modern fuel injected car, giving it gas is is not needed. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it can be if the throttle blades are getting gummed up. If, okay. if there's carbon on the throttle blades, one of the tips, tip-offs that, that that's happening is the fact that you tip into the throttle a little bit and crank it, and they start. you give it a little bit more air. You can actually choke off quite a bit of air uh, if there's enough carbon in the throttle blades, and, and the thing needs air to start. So that can be an issue, but I would be going after that misfire right off the bat, even if it's intermittent and somebody's... Had a hard time diagnosing it. Yeah, that's a, that's a telltale sign of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, you should be going after that. For sure. Well, thanks for the call, Jennifer. And if you need a good auto repair shop because you don't have one, bumper to bumper radio.com. You're in Scottsdale, so we've got Air Park Auto up in North Scottsdale. Those guys are great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, down on our end, Tempe, Tri City Transmission Auto Repair. We'd be happy to take a look at that for you. And we're going to go with uh, Bobby in Litchfield Park. He's got a 2005 Chevy, Chevy Suburban. How can we help you, Bobby? You're on bumper to bumper radio. How's it going, guys? Fantastic. Good. Awesome. So I got this really irritating problem right now. Okay. Uh, my Suburban, which I love dearly, and it runs like a champ, it's going into limp mode lately when I start hitting bumps. Like, you know, not one big bump, but if I get on a bumpy road and it's bumped for like three to five seconds, it'll go into limp mode. When you say limp mode, uh, three-quarter ton, is what motor's in that? It's the six-liter. It's the six-liter. When, when you say limp, and you mean reduced power message come up on the dash? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Is it, it's not. A, is it? A, you're not referring to a transmission limp mode. Uh, it doesn't tell me on the screen, and no okay. check engine lights or anything come it just, come on. It just says reduce engine power, and it won't power. let me go past you know 800 RPM or so. Yeah, it's detected a problem with the throttle by wire system. That that car doesn't actually have a throttle cable on it. The, the gas pedal isn't actually attached to the throttle on the engine. It's all it's all fly by wire stuff. And whenever you see that happen, there's an issue with the fly by wire system. Um, boy, in that particular one has some issues. Uh, there's there's issues with wiring problems with the throttle bodies themselves, with what we call the accelerator pedal position sensor. Um, yeah, you have to, you start at the beginning, get a scan tool hooked up to it, see if there's any fault code stored in it, and you take it from there um, one step at a time on that one. Um, as often as not, I find broken wires, bad wire terminals out at the throttle body themselves, but there are some cars that had to have overlays done on the wiring harnesses to prevent electrical noise from interfering with that system. So that particular one can be a handful, especially if it's intermittent on you. And most of them are. Yeah, and what's happening is that is that 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 system they don't want these cars running away on you. Absolutely not. <laughs> so so it's, it, it, the failsafe is to shut it off. It, it got it, plenty it, of redundancies in it. Yes. Any hint of we may have a problem, so yeah. it doesn't want it to go racing so it's, off. It's on very it's a very sensitive system. It's very sensitive to electrical noise. Well, thanks for the call, Bobby. We are going to go with uh, Chris and Levine. He's got an 07 Honda. And uh, go ahead, Chris. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, guys. How are you today? Good. Fantastic. Hey, um, my air conditioner is fading a little bit. I need to go get it checked out. I'd like a recommendation. Yeah, now I see you're in Levine. Is, is that a 07 Honda Pilot? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's. A, if you need a good recommendation, I mean, we've got uh, SNS tires over in the West Valley. Yep. Um, but if you go to bumper to bumper radiocom you're going to find a list of great repair shops. These are places that I'd, I'd gladly, carte blanche, recommend you go there uh, that are going to take good care of you. So basically, they're going to start with a basic AC system check. You know, we, we've talked about this in weeks past. We're yep. going to make sure it's full of refrigerant, make sure that the, you know, the doors and the dashboard are working, make sure the fans are coming on, and all the things that needs to happen, for, you know, for sure. So, right. And one thing that, you know, people are always like, well, you know, I need something by my house. Well, there's also something by your work, too. 
So yeah. you may live in Levine, but if you work, you know, in Central Phoenix, hey, go to Virginia Auto Service. They're perfectly, handle, you know, capable of handling a, a air condition on an 07 Honda. Sure. Anyway, let's go with Scott in Goodyear. He's got a 2005 Ford Taurus. Go ahead, Scott. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Oh, thank you for taking my call, guys. Um, I bought this car about a year ago um, as just a daily commuter from Goodyear to Scottsdale, where I work, um, just because of the mileage. Anyways, um, it's just got this one little problem on it. Um, after operating temperature, um, it's usually I take the interstates. Um, it comes down to a hard shift from first to second uh, once I get back onto the surface streets. Uh, but it only does it, you know, after it's at operating temperature or kind of stop and go traffic. I've taken it to the dealerships and uh, one transmission shop. I won't name no names, but they both tell me that it needs a transmission, you know, a transmission, and I'm just like. How can it need a transmission if it's just that one little problem right there? Right. Sure. Well, yeah, so what, what, what's probably more than likely going on is that, that when that thing's out on the highway and you're driving it, you know, headed to Scottsdale, the computer is registering a slip of the transmission. It may be not something that you recognize. Maybe it's just a torque converter clutch slip. So that's maybe 100 RPM. You're mm -hmm. never going to feel 100 RPM. John is good, so he might feel 100 RPM no. in his in his seat <laughs> uh, you know. But uh, you know, we're, we use scan tools to verify that slip, so we can actually look at the engine speed, we can look at the input speed of the transmission, and, and, and see if there's any slip going on. So what happens is it's taking it's elevating the line pressure in the transmission to get it up to compensate for that slip. And so when you when you the shift from first to second gear is always when the pressure's up, that's always going to be the one you feel because that one has the you know the largest uh, I would say gear change, you know, so that's, and, and also inertia. You know, yeah. something that stopped wants to say yeah, stop, there's... something rolling down the road. When well, you're going 40, 50 there. miles an hour, you don't have, hardly notice a shift. Yeah. But that one two shift is going to be the hard one. So that's what they're seeing, and that's why they're recommending that you need a transmission. Uh, you know, so we do a lot of repairs where, let's just say it's a torque converter clutch. Well, mm -hmm. we can pull out the transmission, uh, send the torque converter out, you know, have it machined open and verify that's what's wrong. Yeah. Also, partially disassemble the transmission, at which point we can verify the transmission is healthy or unhealthy. Yeah. If the transmission's healthy, well, we just do a torque converter and reseal the transmission, new fluid and filter, and send it down the road. Yeah. So there's different ways to fix transmissions. You know, it, a lot of times, some places just want to put a whole different transmission sure. when, when there's still, you know, va, you know, life and value in that transmission. So we talked about cooling system. We didn't get to our fact or fiction today. But one of the things I want to, you know, a lot of people like to work on their own cooling system because they say, oh, just a thermostat. But, John, you brought it before the show, vacuum filling cars. Yeah. These cars are different, and a lot of this stuff can't be done in your driveway anymore, and you end up with a cooling system that never quite works right, and you can end up doing damage to your car. So yeah. if you're not sure you got all the tools, you know what, do what you're good at, and, you know, whatever your job is, and let us fix the car for you. Yeah. And if you need a shop, bumper to bumper radio .com. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Brie, for running the dials.